think everyone can remember this very specific moment when the first lockdown got announced in your country and what you were doing at this specific moment. And I can remember I was currently preparing my lectures. I teach at a university. I love to teach. I, I love to teach in a very interactive way. I do love to start discussions with my students. Um, in one of my classes, I do have a lot of students. I have more than 100 students, but I still love to get, go into my lecture hall, interact with the students, um, discuss with them the topics. And what I especially love about t being able to teach at the university, our lecture halls are open to everyone. So I knew that often there would be students sitting in the audience who are not students from our university or who are not students at all, but just interested in this topic. And the moment I heard about this lockdown and preparing my lectures, I knew I'm going to miss those two super important aspects, the, open, the possibility to provide open content and the possibility to have really strong discussions and interactions with the students. So I decided to not use one of those closed systems, um, like those video conference systems or learning management systems, which are only closed to, to, your, to your school. Um, I thought I wanted to still have this open character and decided to use a, a tool which is usually used for something entirely different um, for, to provide my lectures, namely Twitch. Twitch, just very quickly, is a platform which is usually used for game streamers. So people, like in that case, me in the past, um, would sit there and and play video games, stream it to, to the world, and everyone can just join in and start discussing about the, the game, about anything um, in the chat. It's a very interactive culture. People love to interact with, with each other. A community is built around those um, streamers. And they start talking, discussing the content, um, talking about the game, asking questions to the, to the streamer about the game or themselves. And it's, yeah, it's a very open and communicative culture. And I thought, why not use this? Um, because I had experience in streaming games, why not use this platform, usually used for, for gamers, to provide more lectures? This is what happened. I um, started um, teaching my courses on Twitch and instead of 140 students which were registered by then at some point I have almost 400 people from all over the world watching my lecture. For a lecture which usually would take 45 minutes all of a sudden I needed more than 90 minutes um, to discuss all the topics which were tackled in the chat. It was crazy. Um, do all those interactions in the chat, do too many questions, people starting giving each other tips and hints, even people from the experts from the industry would join in and, and start discussing with the students. My lectures took way longer than they used to in a traditional lecture style. I had more interactions, I had more students. And I was even able to invite experts from all around the world to discuss with us. While teaching online due to the lockdowns was really frustrating for many educators. And many of my colleagues were frustrated about missing interactions, dropouts. Um, I had the best time teaching online on this platform, which was originally not for education, but for, for gaming content. And I really want to point out the possibilities which are out there, especially coming from the tools around the games industry for all other purposes, industry application fields. And I was not only the only person misusing this platform. Twitch got quite a rise in, in viewers, but also in streamers due to the lockdowns and people starting streaming live concerts, art performances, theaters. By now there are cooking shows and uh, talk shows. So it's crazy how this platform, again originally designed for gamers, um, is now used by so many other disciplines.
And I really want to point out the games industry has to face so many biases. The games industry um, is considered in the society um, often to really focus on only violence and addiction. And there are so many biases towards games and tools around games. And very rare then there is a deeper understanding of what is actually behind this industry and actually raising questions such, such as is this an industry which is not only for purpose of entertainment but eventually can have so many other opportunities for our fields as well and I want to directly jump in and give you another example um, during the lockdown I think every one of us had this feeling of isolation and had this experience, what does it mean to be um, isolated, away from your friends, away from your family. Um, so we had interesting platforms like Zoom and WebEx and Skype and so on and so forth. So all those video can conferencing tools reached their peaks, but they faced also so many challenges. Like we started every single conversation with, hello, can you hear me? But there is one industry again, one, one tool which has experience in bringing together thousands of people at the very same time in one platform. And not only at one platform, but also in one virtual space um, where you can meet and interact with each other, namely multi-user games. If I have a video call with my friend, or with, with a colleague. It's very visible that both of us are apart. It's nice that we can see each other, right? But on the other hand, it's very visible that I'm in my home office and you're at your home office. So we are apart. However, in a video game, we can share a space together. And in the first lockdown, one video game was released called Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing, um, this is the picture on the top left, it's this lovely video game where you can meet friends uh, or meet other avatars. You arrange yourself a little bit of an avatar, you create your own island. On your island you create your own space, you can um, you, um, create a garden, you can create a virtual museum, a virtual aquarium and then invite your friends and family over um, to yeah, visit your space go to the virtual aquarium together. And also this plot platform was misused by non-gamers uh, for non-gaming context. So all of a sudden there were virtual weddings, virtual um, birthday celebrations, funerals, even academic conferences happening in Animal Crossing, but also in other platforms. And this is not, not something which is new. What we see at the bottom right, this is a picture um, of World of Warcraft, a giant memorial service for one of the players. So the games industry, the gamers do use games already since so many years as social experience. Many do not know that um, we gamers love to use the games um, to meet others. We, we eventually many of us even met good friends or um, significant others uh, through the platform. It is not this isolated space um, the society often um, is talking about. We gamers love to use games also as social experience and the games industry has experience in building those social spaces. So I'm not surprised that especially this is the time when everyone starts talking about virtual worlds or the metaverse again. I think the pandemic really showed us um, the necess necessity of sharing virtual spaces together and and use not only this capability of seeing each other, but also being able to share a virtual space, stand next to each other, visit a virtual museum together. So it's not surprising for me to see that Microsoft just bought uh, this with 70 billion um, dollars, um, the gaming studios, um, Activision, Blizzard, 
who have experience in the development of multi-user words like Warcraft or Diablo. And also we in our team, we used game-related spaces, these pixel offices, in that case Gather Town, to rearrange our home office situation. We are still in home office, but we enjoy using a virtual space um, where you can see, hey, is, is my colleague online? Can I quickly just ask them a question? Um, can I jump into their office and maybe just ask how we're doing? And those are the experiences we need during those challenges time. Being apart, but being still together in a space, even though it's a virtual space. Um, and I do want to point out that um, this is also strongly connected with the um, creation of content. So when we look into the past um, and how the internet um, changed us and the way how we behave and uh, contribute to the information in the web, we can see that we always wanted to add ourselves. We always just wanted to add content like on Wikipedia, uh, with the web 2.0, we wanted to create more and more um, content ourselves, not only be consumers, but also creators. The social media um, um, boom really showed us that we want to provide our own videos, our own content, now with Twitch, our own streams, our own pictures, and Instagram, and so on and so forth. And it will be very relevant for the future that we also learn how to um, create digital content for such worlds um, and use tools from the games industry to actually make interactive experience able content. Just to give you one example, a tool which is used in the games industry already for, for so many years um, are so-called game engines. Those are software tools which enable you to create your own um, experiences. Um, by now, those tools became way more accessible. You can, um, without being a super programmer, you can create your own small digital worlds. You can invite others to the virtual exhibitions. And that's why I believe it's such a valuable tool also for archaeologists, historians, psychologists, um, phil philosophers to also start creating um, their own small virtual environments, their own virtual worlds and their own content through tools from the games um, industry. This is an example how such a game engine would look like. This is where I'm currently creating my own personal story um, through a video game. And we use those tools um, to in, in so many other fields and industries. And we use it for education. In that case, we created a virtual um, physics laboratory full of interactive simulations with a tool known from the games industry. And um, this can be also used for creating virtual surgeries, virtual exhibitions, or um, digital twins for uh, <coughs> for the for the industry and and showing energy related problems, for instance. Instance. And I want to close this talk by pointing out we need to get rid of all those negative bias towards the industry which always pushed innovation. That's why we have those smartphones these days with um, interesting, cheap, um, with powerful GPUs because it was gamers who always wanted to um, have a better performance and more frames um, in their video games. This is why we have interesting virtual reality experiences. This is why we have so many opportunities these days, um, which can be also relevant for other industries. I want to just make you aware that there are tools out there which are used by the games industry or by gamers already for so many years, which might have the potential to also change the way you work in a positive way, the change you might meet your friends in a positive way or change your entire industry in a for for better. Thank you so much for considering that and hopefully some of you might rethink um, your bias towards games and its industry.